News Radio 840 WHAS. Good Sunday morning. Bob Sekoler and the Louisville Real Estate Show with you to the top of the hour here in uh, July. And with us, some great folks. We've got a lot of questions. Let me just get right to it. Chuck Crosby joins us. The Crosby Law Offices. He's the owner of. Not only does he does does he do phenomenal closings, he really does. You can pick the closing attorney you want. He's entertaining, he's quick, he's enjoyable to be with, so it makes it easy. But he also does things like evictions and uh, appeals from judgments, um, things like wills, which I myself have uh, been uh, privy to having his uh, his expertise on a will for myself and my family. So he's a great guy. You can reach Chuck anytime, 499-6360. Also, Brad Lawler is here, owner of the Home Team Inspection Service. They're the number one home team inspection service in the country now, eight years in a row. And there's some new news. New news. Do you want to explain what that is? Yeah. Well, a home team uh, here in Louisville, Kentucky, is now expanded into Frankfurt and Lexington. So we are now serving the Kentuckiana and bluegrass regions of our state. And in case you need some termite help, and we've got people who do, uh, there are questions about it. But now you can go to Team Bugout, and uh, and I I made the switch as well. And you can reach Brad and Home Team Inspection and Team Bugout, I think. Through this number, 844-411-TEAM. Mm-hmm. So that should help. And my name, Bob Sekolder. If you're thinking of selling your home, and now is the perfect time to put your home on the market, we can help you in just seconds. All you need to do is give me a call. And if you're looking to buy a house, we have uh, 10 agents who can help you get rocking and rolling and um, and find your house. And we have ways of finding houses, even in this very tight market with interest rates hovering 6.57%. You can reach me at 376-5483. That's 376-5483. Or you can go to bobsellslouisville.com. All right, so we've got a lot of questions that are here coming up, by the way, a little later on in the show. There really is a right way and a wrong way to vacuum your floors. One thing in particular just blew me away, and I'm thinking, oh, this is really good information. So we'll get to that in a bit. I should point out son Greg is joining us, who does our marketing, photography, and so much more. And he appears to have received a haircut uh, since the last time I saw him. So, yeah, it's been yeah, a while. Good for you. Yeah, right. yeah. Very good. All right, so um, let's go to the questions. Corey, for you, Chuck Crosby. Corey, who admitted uh, he uh, changed his name because of what you are about to hear in this email that he wrote to us. He wrote in, says that he is selling his home early next year and got a copy of the disclosure, which asks about production of methamphetamines and other drug items. Corey says he may have used some non-legal items in the house. He's worried if he answers the disclosure honestly, he wants to know, could it get him into some legal trouble? And he says he feels like he's caught in a catch-22 at this point. Well, you know, that's getting into some criminal issues. Um, If you're manufacturing meth in the house Mm. and you answer that correctly and it's been recent, yeah, it might be able to get you in some trouble. Um, I would think so. Uh, But then again, you're going to get in a lot more trouble if they go in and find out you didn't tell them about it. Um, They're going to have to shoot. What is the usual protocol? Don't they rip out all the drywall? Yeah, they do. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you're you're going to get an all you're you're not only going to have really irritated a new buyer who will have great incentive to come after you for money and anything else they can dredge up. So I guess his point is, if he answers it legally, could uh-huh. that get him into trouble? That's what I'm saying. Um, if he might have smoked something there, that's one thing. You know, people do some things like that. I don't know that that's part of any disclosures. But if we're talking about the manufacturing uh, and, and uh, you know, where the house would be tainted, um, if I were to buy that house, find out that's the cause, you can yeah. bet I'm going to get it uh, repaired and I'm going to be calling the cops. Yeah, yeah, I so think what he's asking is if he admits to making meth but didn't get caught, but he removed the meth making material. Right. Disclosed yeah, but you can't, that he made meth. Can the cops come arrest him for saying? I, I don't. I don't know meth. that. Uh, I don't no. know that I that I would accept <laughs> that premise. Uh, Brad, you correct me if I'm wrong. But if you're manufacturing it, just because I take the stove and the the accoutrement out of the house <laughs> doesn't take it out of the wall. No, it's still no, no, no. I don't think that's what he's yeah. saying either. No, I'm no, saying, that's. 
you know what? I think he's saying, yeah. I'm, I might be, and I don't know his name, but I might be a good stand, a good standing meth user and maker, and I took it all out of my house, and I'm going to disclose that I used to make meth, but I didn't get arrested, but I want to be good and disclose that I, I made the meth, but can I now get arrested because I said I made meth? I don't see where you would necessarily, uh, if I were to come in as prosecutor, I don't know that we'd be able to get the necessary proof, proof right. other than him saying it. It's not under yeah. oath. Uh, however, yeah. Yeah. I can guarantee you, as I've been saying, <laughs> if I go into that house and I find that uh, it's been tainted with that, I'm, I've got a great deal of incentive not to just go after him civilly, but also to start yeah. calling friends of mine. On oh, the so the moral of the story is you need to disclose. <laughs> Needs to disclose, yeah. right. No matter if you think you may get arrested, if you want to sell the house, you could have a bigger problem on your hands right. for not but disclosing again, it. It's yeah. not under oath yeah. and yeah, all that it. kind got of it. stuff. But uh, And, it, you know, the whole pleading the fifth doesn't come into place because that's not even – Anything yep. you can do in a civil issue. All right. Well, let's move on. Um, we should change Cor- change Corey's name from Corey to Walter White. I think. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's true. All right. So let's move forward here. And Brad, this is for you over at Home Team Inspection Services. Marie wrote us this email. She has an air conditioning problem. The top floors of her estate are hot in the summer. Yep. Uh, we we hear this a lot, don't we? Mm-hmm. Uh, Seventy eight yep. to eighty degrees in the daytime. Mm-hmm. She wanted to close off supply vents in the home. Oh, we know this. Uh, she doesn't use. So she would yeah. take off the rooms that she doesn't use. Does that work? She says, will that work for her? No, that probably will not work. Uh, systems are set up to balance the, the air temperatures across the house. So when you start shutting off rooms, closing doors, closing off vents, what you're doing is you are impacting the air as it's turning back to the uh, to the air handler to be conditioned, to be cooled, to have the humidity taken out of it. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, so people that live in these larger homes, um, particularly the, those that are kind of open upstairs, um, yeah. when, when they start closing rooms off, What's happening is that is the air needs to get into those rooms to get into the returns to go back down and it's blocked and so the house is going to stay hot um, in the summertime it'll stay cold in the winter because the same thing is happening uh because all of your heat is 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 rising to those upper lo- rooms so yeah you need to leave the vents open you need to leave the doors open i know it sounds counterintuitive but your system's going to actually run more when you shut all those all those doors off your your thermostat's not going to be measuring accurately and you're you're throwing off uh, the air temperatures that are going in back into your air handler so leave the doors open as yep. well as yep. leaving the vents on a channel. correct yep okay so to me it would be a little counterintuitive but okay i get that yeah no, we it, learned it, this actually it's, yeah. it's, you better bring it up we do a lot of new construction my wife and i and and in building our own house actually we worked directly with the hvac company because it was a custom plan mm-hmm. and they were very specific about where you put the thermostats in the home how you don't not shutting off certain vents because we have a, a long home, kind of like yep. a shotgun style, but they designed the system to flow most efficiently the way they designed it. Yep. And if you start blocking stuff off, like Brad said, it's going to unbalance the system. Right. Got it. If you want to see a repeat of today's show, you can go to LouisvilleAnswers.com, and that's our YouTube channel where this video, which is also part of the radio show, will resonate in LouisvilleAnswers.com. And if you want to see what people are saying about us, actually see and hear, you can go to LouisvilleSellersTalk.com. It's also a redirect to our YouTube channel for our sellers, LouisvilleSellersTalk.com. All right, we go over to Chuck Crosby, the Crosby Law Offices. You can... Uh, Let's see. Samantha writes in. She says that she just got a recommendation from her realtor for a handyman, and it turns out that guy was absolutely terrible, Chuck. Yeah. And is he's, She's wondering, is there a way for realtors to put together a list of both good and bad contractors so consumers can be aware? Wouldn't that be like a, a yeah. illegal? Yeah, I think that would be. Um, and I don't know of any realtor who would want to put their name out there on such a list, because what if the wrong person gets on it? And then, you know... Yeah. Uh, shoot, it's not a tort I've ever seen done, but, uh, uh, there, it, it can be actionable if you, uh, uh, mess with someone's business. Uh, you start saying bad things about the business without cause. Well, it's kind of a business version of defamation. Mm-hmm. I would so. tell you what we do and tell us if this is a problem. I don't think it is Chuck is we will tell our clients names of vendors that we work with who do a good job and we ask mm-hmm. 
our clients to report back to us to say, did they do a good job or yes or no? Yeah. And then and you don't ever give the name out again. If they're putting up bad, a list of do right. not go to this guy, it's yeah, this probably yeah, going to yeah. be a problem. Not so good. You can yeah. go to the Better Business Bureau and check to see if there have been any complaints filed against that particular business. Le- but let's let's give tips. I mean, because there's labor, good labor is hard to find. I think everyone knows these days. Mm-hmm. And, and we've even had experience where a good friend of ours, past client, had a handyman service sent somebody out and they do a lot of this stuff on contract because there's a lot of people coming and going in that industry sent somebody to the house did a terrible job thankfully because we have our reputation with them and we had that that relationship they didn't charge us they sent somebody else out took care of the job they were phenomenal we made sure to get that specific contractor's number for the future yeah uh, but just relationships have good relationships you know, check three qualifications or check three jobs that they've done in the past. We always recommend um, so you can be assured that you're getting quality. We move on to Brad Lawler at Home Team Inspection Service. Uh, Pauline sent us an email about her drain in her new home having a problem. Apparently, Brad, in this email, she says, water is taking a long time to go down the drain. A friend suggested it might be roots from a large tree out back clogging the sewage line. Mm -hmm. So Pauline is wondering, so how does she confirm its roots? And are there chemicals she can pour down the drain to get rid of the roots, but not kill the tree? Okay, great question. Um, now, did she say new construction, Bob? Or new just, home, yeah. New, new construction, uh, new, yeah. New, new home. New home, new construction. Okay, yeah. well, let me, I'm going to answer it both ways because I heard big okay. tree. Yeah. So w- there are cameras that can go down into your main drain lines and, and will look to see whether or not you have those hair roots from the trees in the in the lines i will tell you that there are chemicals that you can put down there they flush down the toilet they are supposedly effective for hair roots i think i'd rather just call a plumbing service to come out and clear that line Um, i think it's going to be more effective immediately effective versus something that's going to take place over time those hair roots eliminating the hair roots are not going to damage the tree they're not going to kill the tree off they're just very very fine roots just think about you know when you dig up even a piece of grass all those fine hair roots that you have they're just from the grass so trees put put down the same things but in new construction the interesting thing about is oftentimes you don't see the hair roots getting into those drain lines but you see lines that are crushed or broken because of the heavy the equipment oh. that rolls over mm-hmm. those lots and so you end up with these broken drain lines and if you don't inspect them uh, before you move into the house you may never even know that you're pumping sewage actually into your yard rather than uh, on into the uh, into the sewer line Interesting. So, which is really another reason, even in new construction, you should yes. get a home inspection by a reputable inspection company yes. outside the scope of what the county inspectors do. Correct. Because, I mean, you're never going to know unless you scope that line to see that uh, that you had damage out there. But, yep. you know, you, you you know all the problems that come up with new new construction, new builds. Mm-hmm. And it's not that it's there are terrible builders out there. It's really just where one subcontractor's work met, meets up with another subcontractor's work. Mr. Got it. Crosby, you had a question? Yeah, I did. Uh, so let's say that you have them go in and uh, root out all those uh, those hair roots. Um, do they not just grow right back? So what happens over time when you move into a house, okay, and I don't know, again, if this is new, sometimes you have small families, say two people living in the house, one person living in the house. They don't have that much you know, solids that are running through those lines, knocking those little hair roots off. Vacant homes, this is a problem. Um, but what happens is when you have larger families moving in with bigger stuff, that's when you start getting things clogged up. But, it, but what I normally see is the larger families that are putting more things down those pipes they tend not to have the same problem with the hair roots but you know again this could have been a house that was vacant for a period of time the mm-hmm. hair, hair roots got in there or you know it was something funny that happened during construction but yeah it's the solids that get caught on those hair roots which which caused the uh the backup Good. okay right. so yeah um, just a little uh question here mm-hmm. so you've got the roots that have gone through yeah. the pipe Yes. Uh, does that not mean the pipe needs to be replaced? No, it's just if they get they go around the seals and into the pipes. I mean, okay. where the joints the are, terracotta. Where the, yeah. Okay. yeah, the joints are. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they're not okay. necessarily breaks. They're just they're just naturally occurring. They just get in the joints. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But good question, Chuck. Yeah, very yeah. good. It is. It is. Chuck Crosby with the questions today. All right, yeah. so we're we're going to take a break. By the way, a reminder: we were talking earlier about getting recommendations for vendors and all. We're really proud of our our reviews which come from our, our clients. You can go to louisvillezillow.com or louisvillegoogle.com to see those reviews. We're very proud of those. 
We're going to take a break. When we come back, vacuuming your home the correct way. A couple of tips that I think you might say, oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, Again, with us, continuing Chuck Crosby. He owns the Crosby Law Offices and besides doing a great job at closing real estate deals when you're going to buy a new home, he also does a variety of other things, including wills and powers of attorney. Also with us, Brad Lawler, who is owner of the Home Team Inspection Service, now serving Frankfurt and Lexington as well. So you can get in to see that. And also Team Bugout. He's becoming a magnet of a variety of services for for the area. You can reach Home Team Inspection and Brad, 844-411-TEAM. Uh, my son Greg who does our marketing photography so much more with us. And you can reach me if you're looking to sell your home. Do not hesitate. Give me a call anytime, day or night, on my cell phone, 376-5483. That's area code 502-376-5483. Or go to bobsellslouisville.com or just we sell louisville.com. We're back in a moment on News Radio 840 WHAS. News Radio 840 WHAS, Bob Sekolder, the Louisville Real Estate Show with you till the top of the hour. Continuing with us, Chuck Crosby. He owns the Crosby Law Offices, and you can reach him for your closings and many other things at 499-6360. Also, Brad Lawler, owner of Home Team Inspection Service. They come in as a team. They're servicing Louisville, Frankfurt, and Lexington now. And you can reach Brad for Home Team Inspection or for a team bug out. 844-411-TEAM. Son Greg is with us, who does our marketing, photography, and so much more. And you can reach me if you're thinking of selling your home. We are ready to help you. You can call me anytime. And if you're going to buy a home, we've got 10 agents ready to help you there as well. You can reach me at 376-5483. That's 376-5483. All right. And a thank, by the way, to Barbara Corcoran, who does our uh, endorses us and does a great job with our commercials. And also on Shark Tank. She's coming up this coming week, I believe, on Shark Tank. So uh, vacuuming, uh, that's going to be a pet peeve of a lot of people. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I look at that as a workout, right? Because it's another way of working out. Okay. So there is a right way and wrong way to vacuum. This is what some of the things that are standard. Things like you start with a clean vacuum. So empty the canister. Often don't neglect brushes, filters, and belts. So make sure you do that. Don't vacuum around clutter. Yeah, that's pretty standard. You don't want to suck up plant leaves, coins, toys, you want to dust first before you do the vacuuming so any of the dust gets onto the floor, hopefully, instead of, I know it goes into the air, but hopefully it falls onto the floor before you go to the vacuum. But here's the thing. Guys, how many times, Chuck, I want to hear your answer, Brad and Greg, how many times should you make a pass over the carpet? This is the thing that blew my mind. Brad is putting up two, which two either times. means victory or two Peace. times. Peace, Peace with two. your vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Chuck, you want to take a, a guess at this? How many times? Oh, when vacuum. I do it, I do it one and a half. Oh, so you so go you're forward, the overlapper. Right? Yeah. yeah, I go forward and then I come back over half and then forward, then back over half. Okay, Greg, I, anyone? I, yeah. I, I would say, I'm going to say it's one good pass, meaning two, one up, right. one down, back, back and, and then, then the overlap. Make that little V. Okay. So yep. it's kind of yep. two and a half or, you know, one yeah. full, then you move. All right. But Chuck, may be, Chuck may be describing the same thing as well. Same thing. Experts say you should be making multiple passes over the carpet. It's important to vacuum several times over each area as you go. One pass rarely picks up all the dirt and the debris on the floor. So two or more passes. Slowly pull the vacuum backward to catch anything that may not have been picked up from the initial pass. After making two passes in one row, move to the next row and overlap the previous row. Much like mowing a lawn, though. I don't know that I overlap. This will ensure no dirt, dust, or debris gets left behind okay yeah hey i got one of this quick story on that bob yeah. you know uh, vacuuming is fascinating to me yeah so i would also recommend that you have a vacuum with a hepa filter and if you have pets make sure that you get one of those pet hair uh, mm. equipped vacuum cleaners but i did a mold investigation in the house and the clients oh. were convinced that the mold that they had on their ceiling was making them sick because their kids were having some problems and the allergist said hey they're allergic to some different types of molds find the mold they found these spots. We tested the spots. The spots were nothing. I tested the air in their in their living room where they had no problems. They didn't think they had any complaints. Hardwood floors with an area rug, and they had extraordinarily high aspergillus penicillium in this room. And they're like, what happened? Well, what they found out was that uh, several months earlier, their kids found some rotted oranges in a fruit basket, and they were throwing them around the... Yeah. 
the the living room and it got all of that got into the carpet and that's where the mold was found uh, it was it was actually growing carpet but the the uh the the lady of the house if you will she was so excited because she'd been using a 12 year old vacuum cleaner from when she and her husband originally got married and she was finally going to get an upgrade to i won't name the name but that had a HEPA filter and she was doing a little dance and a jig when I told her that wow. uh, it was, we found it in the, uh, in the carpet. So guess, guess who left the rotted oranges around for the kids to throw around. I oh, think but that, that, that was her pre, move. Yeah, really, planning, you know? She was, she, she planned it out. Well, that was yeah, well that was, done. <laughs> If you're thinking of selling, we have a free, no obligation booklet that could give you a lot of hip tips and get you going. It's uh, 150 plus tips. You can simply go send me an email, bob at we sell louisville.com. And in the subject, just put home selling tips and I will send it right back out to you. Bob at we sell louisville.com is the email address. Okay, Chuck over at Chuck Crosby uh, a law, a law Offices. James wants to buy a duplex here in Louisville and live in one section of it. And then he wants to put his grandmother, who needs medical attention, into the other side of the duplex. But currently, he says there's a tenant in that other side, and he's wondering if he buys the duplex, closes on, is there a way to evict the tenant so he can move his grandmother into the other side? When you buy a house, you buy it subject to the lease that's already in place. So, no, you can't just go in and say, hey, I own the place, get out. Um, you have to abide by the terms of the lease. Now, if it's a month to month lease, hmm. well, then you can go and say, hey, look, you know, I'm not going to renew the lease uh, when the next month period runs out. So let's see what's today. Uh, if if we were to do it today, it would be, uh, you know, given the 30 days notice, it would be a month from today and then to the end of that month uh, before he could do anything. So it would be, you know, almost two months uh, before he could move her out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you have to abide by the lease. If it's, uh, if there, if it was just signed, there's a year lease in place. That's what you got to deal with. It is what it is. Yeah. All right. This is really for everybody. I, I don't know. Greg, are you officially, you're not in Oldham, you're in Jefferson. Jennifer recently moved into an Oldham, North Oldham County home. And she writes in asking about her water bill. Apparently she is paying for an exorbitant amount of money to, was it MST, uh, for sewage, the sewage side of the water bill. Yeah. And she's wondering if there's, she thinks there's an additional charge that people in Oldham County pay for the disposal of water. And because she's being hit with some pretty high $400 plus uh, bills for water and uh, sewage. Does anybody have a clue on that one? Is water more expensive to dispose of in Oldham County? I haven't heard of anything, specifically yeah. anybody complaining okay. on bills. We have our neighborhood split. Usually somebody would remark yeah. on the neighborhood app. Um, but I will say that the uh, the increasing charges in water disposal are quite annoying. And um, when you water your grass, even though you're not disposing of that water, it's going under grass. If you don't have a split system, you're right? Separate uh, meter. Yeah. You mm -hmm. separate meter, then you're yeah. paying for water disposal that you're not disposing of. You're yeah, using. So, I wasn't yeah. aware of an extra charge. So if anybody knows about the extra charge, if there is an Oldham County, please email me, bob at com or call me 376-5483. Let me know. Uh, especially right after the show, I'll be glad to take the phone call. Anytime I'll take your phone calls. Chuck, Sonny has a question that may be interesting to a lot of listeners. There's a vacant house in his neighborhood. It's been vacant for at least three years. He's wondering if he pays the back taxes on the property. And I think this comes right up your alley, Chuck. If he pays the back taxes on the property, can he take possession of the house? No, absolutely not. Uh, paying the taxes on the property, if you just go in and say, hey, I want to pay the taxes on this property, he just gave away some money. If he takes an assignment of the county's lien for the back taxes, mm -hmm. then he takes the place of the county so that uh, he has a lien against the property plus costs, plus attorney's fees, uh, plus 12% a year. And he can use that as uh, a basis to foreclose on the property, but that, that still doesn't give him possession of the property. That just lets him put it up for auction. If he's the high bidder, he can take it. Uh, but uh, that's uh, kind of an expensive route to go. That's one uh, of those scams, right? Where they offer, they're like, well, if you, you know, they and do it that. this way, then you can take ownership there, of the home by just paying the taxes. There are some states where that can be done with, with provisions, okay? But certainly not here. Uh, easier way to go is find out who owns the property. That's easy enough. And then see if you can dredge up some errors and then go that route. Uh, but, you know, there are times when a property can be completely leaned up or you can't find anybody. 
that owns it and, you know, taking a tax bill and then foreclosing on it at least gets uh, the property up for auction and then you can bid on it. So, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, we've got one time for one more question. Betty moved into an older home, Brad, over at Home Team Inspection, moved into an older home and decided to have her HVAC ducts cleaned. She said she can definitely smell a difference in the house, mm-hmm. plus less dust particles floating around. She says she's apparently got lucky when she chose her company. And we get a lot of these uh, requests with regards to air ducts. How do you choose the right uh, supplier, right cleaner? Okay. for your house. You got to ask the question about what is the process that they're going to use. Uh, many of them use a, a compressed air system. Um, I have a personal feeling on that. I've, other clients have told me that the compressed air systems have made a mess of their homes. Uh, the, the top uh, duct cleaners that I work with all use vacuum systems with some sort of um, mechan- light mechanical agitation in the lines as they go. Um, but they the, they also need to understand what the lines are. Uh, I won't get into the in in uh, in slab duct work and the possibility of asbestos in there, but you have to be very very careful not to disturb uh, translight. And unfortunately, some of the uh, duct cleaners around here, or the city, just don't understand that. So find find someone who's using a vacuum type system with light agitation. You probably will find the best out there. Um, but again, I would be very cautious about anybody that tells you they're going to come in and use a bunch of uh, compressed air as the uh, as the way mm-hmm. to do the cleaning. All right, good. We're out of time. My thanks to Chuck Crosby, the owner of the Crosby Law Offices, who not only do a great job at closing your loan, which you can pick the closing attorney that you want, but he also does a variety of things like foreclosure defense, commissioner sales, wills, power of attorney. You can reach Chuck at 499-6360. Also, Brad Lawler, who owns the Home Team Inspection Service, now servicing not only Louisville, but Frankfurt and Lexington. And he also owns Team Bugout. So if you need termites or anything else exterminated, uh, this is the number to call for both inspections and for bugs. 844-411-TEAM. 844-411-TEAM. My thanks to my son, Greg, who does our marketing, photography, and so much more. And if you're thinking about selling your house, please do not hesitate to call me right after the show or anytime, night or day, weekends as well. You can reach me on my cell phone, 376-5483. Whether you're going to sell or buy this year or next year, we can help you. It's free, no obligation to have me come out or talk to you about the plan and how to make it happen for you. 376-5483. We'll see you next Sunday on News Radio 840 WHAS.